In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a simple buffer and uh, find the intersect uh, between that buffer and some other layer. This follows up on the last tutorial in which we imported the settlement 2016 centroids and performed a table join uh, between that and uh, another layer which contains the settlement names and population. Uh, you don't have to have done that last tutorial in order for this to work, uh, but uh, keep in mind that towards the end of the exercise, you're not going to see all of the name and population data uh, that uh, I will see here in this tutorial uh, without having uh, performed that join. So the two layers we're going to be using is um, a data set that contains, among other things, all of the railway stations in the United Kingdom and then uh, a set of points for all the settlements uh, in Scotland that you can download here. Uh, once you've downloaded these, uh, you can drag them in. Um, I've also used some natural earth uh, coastline data, uh, which can be found uh, on naturalearthdata.com. And I've dragged those in in the last exercise, and I've dragged in the settlement centroids and the next thing I want to do is to import my uh, railway points. If you open up uh, after having unzipped the NAPTAA and CSV files, you'll see in there that there is one CSV file called Rail References. So I would like to bring this into uh, the project now. To do so, I'm going to use the Add Delimited Text Layer and I'm going to navigate to find that particular file for the rail references and open it. And uh, this has geometry in the form of Eastings and Northings. Uh, it uses the British national grid. Uh, so we'll indicate that the X field is Easting, the Y field is Northing, uh, and make sure that it's uh, set to the, the British national grid. And otherwise, the sample data down here looks nice. It looks like it's recognizing the station names uh, and so on. So if I add that and close, turn off my settlements, uh, you can see essentially in points alone, it doesn't have the rail lines, it just has the railway stations. Uh, you can get an, an idea for the, the rail network. Uh, if we use our identify features uh, and choose any of these locations, uh, you can see here's my workstation here, Lukers Rail Station. Uh, any of these uh, will, will reveal the, the station name. So let's pretend that we wanted to find out uh, what settlements in Scotland are within three kilometers of a railway station. This kind of task is one that buffers uh, is one great way uh, to do it. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is to create a, uh, uh, a buffer around these stations of three kilometers. So clicking on uh, the railway stations, going up to vector, geoprocessing tools, and buffer, we want to create a buffer on the railway stations. We've got meters here, so three kilometers would be 3,000 meters. And now you have a choice to dissolve the result or not to dissolve the result. If I create a buffer without having dissolved the, ref, uh, the result, um, it will create separate circles around every station. When we then do the next step, which is to look for an intersection between the the, the buffer and our settlements, uh, it will essentially produce multiple points in those cases where more than one station intersects with a given settlement. Uh, that may be fine. In fact, you may want it that way so that you can see how many different stations uh, uh, a given settlement intersects with. But uh, it also has a downside. Uh, if you're going to do other kinds of things like counting the number of polygons uh, 
and then you're going to end up with a double count uh, in those cases where, or a triple or a quadruple count in those cases where you have settlements that overlap with, uh, with many stations. So in my case, I'm going to dissolve the results. So it's basically one massive shape in those cases where the buffer overlaps. And uh, let's run this in the background. Okay. All of our buffers, if I put the railway stations here, you'll see that it's created a three kilometer buffer around every station. Um, the reason why our uh, buffers look stretched uh, is because uh, I'm using on the fly uh, conversion. Uh, we have one layer that's in WGS84, one layer that's in British National Grid. If I show the whole thing as National Grid by going to project properties and doing a kind of on the fly conversion with uh, the British National Grid, it now, zooming out here, you can see that the world uh, is not necessarily great to look at if you're looking at the whole world, uh, but uh, if we're just concerned with the United Kingdom or with Scotland, um, it now it now produces nice uh, circular uh, buffers. Okay, so we have the buffers. We don't really need the stations anymore, but we're interested in uh, finding out what settlements. Uh, overlap with the buffer. Now we can see without having done any kind of fancy stuff here, we can literally just manually count uh, these ones or manually go through and select those points, but obviously that's not very efficient. Um, so we want to ask QGIS to give us a new layer that shows us all of the cases in which uh, a station overlaps sorry, the buffer around a station overlaps with uh, a settlement. So clicking on our settlements layer here, we do this by going up to vector, geoprocessing tools, and intersection. And I'm asking, in which cases do my settlements overlap with the new buffered layer that was created uh, just a second ago? Um, this takes a little bit time to run, so I'm going to pause it to when I press run here and then uh, join you again when it's done. Clicking um, run. So this process took about a minute or a minute and a half on my Mac. If I close now, you'll see that it's created a new layer called intersection. Our map looks essentially the same, but notice that we have a different random color chosen for the intersecting points. If I now turn off my settlement centroid, turn off the buffer, you'll see that the new intersection layer shows you only those stations that overlapped uh, with the buffer. So these are the communities um, that uh, are within three kilometers of a station. Using the Identify Features button, uh, I can then identify these communities uh, randomly or uh, individually. However, because I've dissolved the, uh, the buffer, all of these stations are going to be said to be connected to Penzance Rail Station. Whereas if I had not dissolved it, uh, in cases where Inverkeething, for example, uh, has been um, in Rikithing has been um, overlaps with multiple stations, Doggelty Bay and in Rikithing, for example, it'll actually create two points in the intersection layer, one which will be named in Rikithing, uh, but which will have a station name of in Rikithing, and a second, uh, because I believe Doggelty Bay is within three kilometers, um, that will be associated with the station name of, uh, of Doggelty Bay. Uh, but for our purposes, if we're not terribly interested in the exact stations uh, that each of these points are connected to, but just want to identify those that are within a certain range, uh, our job is uh, essentially uh, done here. Um, I can then get rid of these uh, other uh, layers if I want and uh, perform various exercises uh, on this. So again, the tools we used were geoprocessing buffer and uh, geoprocessing intersection. 
um, if you didn't do the last exercise, it wouldn't have given you the name of the settlement and uh, the population data. Uh, uh, so that's something you might want to go back and check out in the, uh, the last exercise.